A common mistake that ensnares people is following the traditional financial investment plan. You've got to control the business of your money just like you control the business of your business. I really want to see other people have the opportunities that I've struggled you know, in many cases to find. Most of them stay on that hamster wheel way longer than they have to because they've been kind of told a lie. Let's talk about capital. You say a common mistake that ensnares people is following the traditional financial investment plan that calls for people to work hard, serve patients, save money, turn the wealth over to a financial advisor or Wall Street, and hope for the best. Sound risky? It is, but it's easy. <laughs> I say it's an easy button to poor investing. How do you like that one? You know. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we talk about this all the time in Freedom Founders, and that's one piece I just love so much to... Um, because we all think the same. So, you know, how do people overcome this? Because you're dealing with this all the time, right? All the doctors that are coming into Freedom Founders, they're very used to being part of the traditional, um, not so much the alternative investments. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's an indoctrination, Greg, is what it is. There's a lot of indoctrination that's going on in this country in a lot of respects, but this is certainly one of them. Yeah. In, you know, the, the quote, you know, financial quote, um, air quotes, retirement planning. I, I kind of hate right. the whole world by itself, but, but that's what it's called. You know, what's your retirement plan look like? Well, you, gr you grow up in this, in this arena where, where all the advice around you when you're through, going through school. And, and I remember when I was, when I was, uh, when I was, you know, getting ready to graduate dental school, you know, there were the, uh, the, 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 the area uh, kind of no, noted um, dent, dental CPAs. I'm not putting them down because I know some very good CPAs that work with dentists, but, but again, uh, most of them um, give advice like this. Hey doc, um, you know, the, the, doc, the doctor or the, the business owner first complains about what? I'm finally making money and I'm paying too much tax. So mm -hmm. I need to find a good CPA, right? So, so you go to the CPA and you say, Mr. or Mrs. CPA, um, you know, how can you help me um, lower my taxes? And they'll say, got just the thing for you. Uh, we'll do a 401k or an IRA or, or some tax mm -hmm. deferral mechanism is what I call it. And, and then you've locked your money up in this thing where you're getting a tax deduction that year. Yeah, wonderful. That's what everybody wants, right? But they're missing the whole ball point. You've got to control the business of your money just like you control the business of your business. Mm -hmm. And most people advocate that because they've been told it's too complex. You, you, know, you, you need someone else to take care of this for you. So do, the, do these tax deferral plans. Give your money over here to some administrator, some money manager who will invest it, you know, in Wall Street, mm -hmm. and we'll have it all ready for you when you're ready to quote retire. Doesn't work out. Never works out. Never works out. Most of the people I know that have done that plan and they have worked hard, they've made a lot of money, and maybe even saved quote a lot of money. Uh, their money's never been working for them. It goes through the ups and downs, as, as you and I both know, of the Wall Street um, yep. cycles. Uh, and there's big bull runs and then bam, about the time somebody's ready to, to sell a practice. I saw this many times uh, in 2000, just, we'll go back several cycles, but in dot com or 2008, mm -hmm. uh, I knew doctors who had just recently sold their practice and all of a sudden uh, their, their retirement plan, their money, their capital on Wall Street, you know, took a hit of 40, 50 percent. And guess what? They sold the practice. Now they got to go back and find a job working for somebody else because they're not going to typically start up another practice at age 65. They got to go work. Got to go back to work because they never took the time, made the effort, and it is effort. There's no easy here. Made the effort to learn how to get their money working for them. And that's what we love in alternatives, uh, which is, you know, what, what we talk about all the time is mm -hmm. you actually have uh, the ability to have some control over what you're investing in. And you can still diversify, but you're diversifying into things and things arenas that, that you have a lot more control and you don't have that volatility that Wall Street um, brings to, to the world. Well, and I think that's the that's a big number one wor word is control. I mean, that's if I put my money into the stock market, I'm just I'm just for the ride. That's about all I can do. You know, I'm not going to get any more information than anybody else has that's out there. Um, whereas the other side, when we're in the real estate uh, sector, we've got a lot, lot more control of what's going to happen. You know, I'm not going to disappear overnight either. So even right. if the values go down we still can get our rents on, on all of that stuff. Exactly. Um, here's another interesting thing that kind of goes along with this. You say, note that the freedom number is not an accumulation number as espoused by the traditional financial planning model. So one is I tell everybody what a freedom number is. Um, and then, and then what do you mean? It's not an accumulation number. What's, what's that mean? So yeah, the freedom number, Greg, is the monthly cash flow revenue that one needs 
to provide for their lifestyle. What's I call it the burn rate. What's it take for you to, to manage your household and mortgage payments and car payments and kids and schools and utilities? And what is that? What is that per month? And, and monthly is the best way to look at it. We can still annualize, annualize it, but monthly is, is the way people live their lives. So what's that monthly burn rate look like? And if you if you get that dialed in, you know what that looks like. And again, it will change, you know, as you go through life. It can maybe go up some during the uh, raising your kids, but it can go down again. But but again, what's that number look like? And if you really get that dialed in, you're conscientious about it, then investing your capital in investments that actually will provide revenue, cash flow, now you've got something to, to work towards, to, to triangulate towards. Instead of what Wall Street says is, look, work hard, save your money, put it you know, typically over somewhere in Wall Street, uh, retirement accounts or not, and just stack up as much as you can, doctor, stack it up. The problem with that, that's called accumulation. Try to get you know a couple million dollars or three or four million dollars, and and now we have people that come to Freedom Founders, and I, when I ask them, I say, you know, the, most of them have financial advisors, right? And I say, well, what does your financial advisor tell you about you know your ability to re, quote, retire when you want to retire? And most of them, it's anywhere from six to ten million dollars. Well, nice target, mm -hmm. nice target mm -hmm. to have, uh, but most people that are working um, in trading time for dollars, I don't care what their income level is, their dollar per hour in, in, in earning capacity because of, of, of the way taxes work in this country, getting to an accumulation number of six, eight or $10 million is not going to be viable for most people because there's they're missing right. so many opportunities, a way to work their money, leveraging opportunities. It's just, it's not gonna happen. So most of them stay on that hamster wheel way longer than they have to because they've been kind of told a lie, misinformed mm -hmm. about accumulation mm -hmm. versus a freedom number when you actually learn to invest your capital into assets that produce recurring, predictable, sustainable mm -hmm. capital, and is also in, in, indexed to inflation, which that cost of living is gonna eat people up. Now you've got something, it's a target, and now you get there and, and we call that in Freedom Founders free for life. When you hit that number, you're free for life. Doesn't mean you have to stop working, no. It means you've got more choices than you ever thought before, and that's when people really start living their life. That's what's really cool. Right, yeah, so it's not how much you're accumulating, and it's what do you get in cash flow that's the most important number. That has been a huge lesson for me in, in Freedom Founders and really thinking about that. So that's that's really been beneficial. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit more capital. This is one of my most favorite subjects here. Capital assets acquisitions allows for financial leverage, the ability to acquire more assets using other people's money. This is a key wealth builder. So this also kind of goes along with our good debt, bad debt conversation, right? And I mean, I'm having these conversations every single day with investors. Um, and you've got the people that are afraid of debt, right? Um, oh, I've got everything paid off. And, and again, nothing wrong with that. It's whatever makes you sleep at night, but you're missing out on a humongous amount of opportunity that's out there. So uh, I know you've used leverage, talk to us about, and, and I, that's what I, I don't even like. In fact, I learned that at Freedom Founders too. I don't even like to call it debt. It's really leverage is what it is. It's debt if it's bad debt. <laughs> if it's on the good side, it's leverage, right? So, I mean, how do you work with people that are kind of afraid of that? Or, you know, they've been taught all these other things that, you know, you don't, you don't ever, you know, don't, don't have the extra debt, get it paid down. And, and yet we've got, Today, 30-year Fannie Mae loans that are somewhere in the 3 4% range, um, and people want to pay them off early. And I just about, you know, <laughs> just, no, please stop, you know, type of deal. So what, what do you think about all that? Well, you're absolutely right. Again, it goes back to indoctrination, you know, what we've, what we've, we've been told to believe, you know, again, from parents or grandparents. I mean, that would, that would have been a prudent man or woman's um, investing or... Uh, lifestyle um, viewpoint, you know, a generation or two ago, mm -hmm. because we didn't have we didn't have the crazy craziness that we have in the markets today. Uh, but but yeah, and there's and there's a lot of people out there that that push for you know no debt. Um, you know, Dave Ramsey's one, and Dave Dave does a good job for people that are in in consumption debt, and they they, they can't balance a checkbook, and they're you know in the credit card debt, you know, for lifestyle, you know, you know out out the kazoo. And, and I appreciate his message to those people, but, but people that um, actually have some discipline, then not using the opportunity of leverage uh, is, is, a, is a huge missing point, as you said. Yeah. Uh, and with tangible assets, hard assets, alternatives that we invest in, the opportunity to acquire uh, more of those assets with this historically low, and again, it's subsidized, it's artificial. I mean, this is where you have to play the game. You have to play the game that goes against 
all the rules that we've learned in the past, but, but playing the game to use the leverage, the low interest rate, fixed rate, as you said, that's available today to acquire cash flowing assets that more than pay the debt, more than pay the management fees on that asset to, to manage it, to produce the cash flow, and still have a tremendous margin of cash flow. Uh, yeah. That's that's the opportunity today. And so your question is, you know, how do you work with people that, you know, come from the standpoint, oh, debt's bad, debt's bad. We just finally got everything paid off. And mm-hmm. and yet, yet and yet they're struggling to get to their freedom number because they've, they've sort of done everything right, except they didn't ever get the capital working for them. And now they come to Freedom Founders. And usually there's one, one member of the couple, um, husband or wife can be either one, who really kind of gets the idea that, that leverage using it wisely is a good thing to do. And the other one's like putting on the brakes. And I respect that. You know, couples do compliment each other. So, so I don't try to get in the middle of that. We just try to help them take baby steps. And mm-hmm. there's a lot to be said about uh, back to relationships, Greg, is when you're learning something new, if you do it with other people who've also been going on that same path, uh, maybe maybe start at the same point. You were like, oh, this debt thing. I don't know, honey. I don't. I want. I don't want to go back into any more debt. We're not going to do that. But then you start finding other people who you find that are very much like you. They're still very conservative about everything in life and their values and philosophy. And they do started maybe a couple of years ago thinking about this new way and dipped their toe in little by little. And and now they're reaping the rewards. So it's 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 really it's just changing people's paradigm. But you can't snap them into it overnight because that's that's too harsh. You just have to kind of take right. people where they are, and you know, educate them and show them and let them baby step into it. But it's it's amazing how quickly people will do that once they get to see social proof that that this actually works. So I think that's a key is you got to see other people that are actually doing it um, that can give you the proof that this process, this opportunity, does actually make sense and work. That you're not the only one out there. And that's that's where the mastermind comes in that's just yeah. so valuable with especially with freedom founders. You're hearing and getting to talk to people from all that stuff. I just talked to a, a friend of mine, he's an investor with us. Uh he lives in California. Uh he owns a two million dollar house that's got a million two of equity in it, you know. And we had just sent out what well, we we call that trapped equity, you know, that's trapped inside the home, right? It's not doing anything for you. You have it there, but it's that's it. I mean, and unless you refinance it or you sell it, that money is just sitting there. So we call that also in the matter of taking the 1.2 million and might as well put it in a, a coffee can and put it in the backyard because it that's exactly what it's doing for you, you know. Um, and he hadn't even really thought about it. We just sent an article out on that. And he's like, oh man, now you've got me all thinking about that. But that's why we do it, you know, get them to, to think about that stuff because it, it, you just kind of, well, the, the art, part of the article, it says your mom wasn't always right. You know, she told you all these different things. Don't go swimming after uh, 30 minutes of eating. You know, you're, if you swallow your gum, it sticks to your stomach for seven years. <laughs> right. And also pay down your house and never have any, you know, well, mm-hmm. not all that's good advice. Okay. So on that. All right, let's talk relationships a little bit. Um, uh, I, I just love this part. So you say, I am at home in small groups or even one-to-one. When I'm in a room where I don't know anybody, I'm quiet. I have to force myself to be the person who makes connections easily. I push myself out of my comfort zone. And not in that same part, but a little bit later, you say, people wear me out. <laughs> and I, and I, David, I can just so relate with you there. You know, I mean, when I'm in the room, I've got to kind of push myself to make the connections because both you and I know how extremely important that is. But, you know, if, if I had my brothers, it would be just having dinner or lunch or something like that with you and Candace and my wife. That's the perfect uh, you know, s- situation, because I can give you all my attention, I can listen to everything that you say, um, and I'm not distracted, you know, um, so I know a lot of other people, um, you know, face this, so tell us a little bit about, you know, where you've kind of come through all this, and, and, and you, you understand how important the connections are. Yeah, so when I say people wear me out, yeah, generally, you know, large groups of people where, and again, these I'm not talking about people that um, are not good people, right? Right. But um, I guess the topics of conversation that interest me and interest you know a general group of people who are fine people and they're talking about the things that are important in their lives and I get all that. Um, they're they're not going to typically be the topics that I'm interested in. So so mm-hmm. being in that midst and having to quote make what I would call small talk. It's mm-hmm. very difficult for me, just not good. So that would wear me out to have to do that for a very, very long period of time. I'd rather 
rather sit in the back of the room and at a table by myself and see if anybody wanders over. Uh, and and if, if they seem to be someone to talk to, then like, as you said, I enjoy that much more having a one-to-one, -one, but just being in a general room where there's just not really any focal point or direction, it's just real hard for me to do. So, but, but I get it. I do, I have a lot of energy, as you know, when I'm with people where we are having topics of conversation that we all believe are important, right? Uh, and and so I do something there and I can, I can do that for, for days on end. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's introvert, extrovert, and yeah. neither, neither aspect is, is right or wrong. We, we got about 50-50 in this country, and some are kind of, you know, ambidextrous. They go between the two. Um, so, uh, like, like having this conversation with you right now, I mean, you can tell I, I enjoy this because I'm just such a, a believer of, you know, the, the missing frameworks that a lot of people have in life, and I had to figure out. I'm excited about that. I like to talk about it because I, I really want to see other people have the opportunities that that I've struggled you know, in many cases to find uh, mm -hmm. but yeah put me in a room where they're just talking about other stuff that just uh you know I just I don't have I just don't have I don't have time or energy for it you know I'm I like I'd rather go read a book you know uh that kind of thing yeah <laughs> I understand I completely get it and there's certain times like you said you're completely energized by it all but then there's other times it's just it's, that's just the way we are and so, you know, uh, that's the way that, that it works on all that. Um, I, I know both you and I have been to the strategic coach, Dan Sullivan, who's a very interesting man who runs the whole thing, very big visionary, big, big thinker, right? And I have witnessed Dan Sullivan literally talking to people and they're still talking and he literally turns around and walks away because he's just bored. He's bored, yeah, exactly. Just bored. And I thought, wow, I wish I had the gumption to do that <laughs> sometimes, you know. But he just gets bored and he just leaves. Yeah. So it cracks me up on that stuff. Some of us can get away with that stuff. All right, well, we know relationships are so big. Um, I, I was just saying this to... Uh, I've actually got two business partners, um, Kyle Kirsch and uh, Steve Sixbury. You've not had a chance to meet Kyle. Kyle came on board a couple of years ago and um, we were just talking the other day and, and um, you know, talking about how important relationships are. Um, and I mean, just, it, it's exactly like yours and mine. I mean, I, we, you and I would not be doing this today unless we kind of forced ourselves to get out there, make connections um, and get to know each other, you know, on all that stuff. So it, it is so important there. All right, let's talk a little bit about legacy and purpose. Um, here's the hard reality. The majority doesn't want you to succeed. They want you to remain with them, living lives of quiet desperation, upholding the status quo. But remember, you get what you accept. If you're willing to accept the path of the majority and then accept mediocrity, mediocrity that comes with it. So what a great way to put that, you know? I mean, they get what they accept. And, they, you know, there's another little piece in your book, too, that you talk about how Dan Kennedy decides. He says, you know, I, let me tell you the most successful people. The most successful people are the ones that never stop when they hear a no. That's right. You know? And they just keep moving. They just keep doing it. So, you know, and I think that a lot about purpose and, and, and legacy, it's pretty deep stuff, you know, in all of this. So, you know, where can people sort of get started in that piece of it, of trying to think about all that? Um, and, I, and part of that probably has just got to be setting time aside, right, to, to actually think, think through it all. I think, tell, I think tell yeah. Some of the ideas that you have on that. Yeah, well, I, I know, Greg, that, Again, this kind of falls back to relationships again. But my my real growth, um, you know, besides reading books and being curious, that that's a big part of it. But I think taking that those ideas and things I'd read, or maybe question myself, uh, or maybe be motivated to <clears throat> to do something different, like like I did when I was when I was back in college, I was reading books about real estate and going, huh, I need to go do this, you know. <laughs> uh, but then you got to then you got to find the people that can help you give you some clarity and maybe have, have already gone down that path that can speed it up. So, so I think you got to use both. You've got to find, you've got to find the right people. Uh, I would say if you're in a place right now in life where maybe things are, are, are good, you're treading water. I mean, you're not like, you know, falling down, but you also realize that just doing the same thing you've been doing for the last five, 10, 15, 20 years, you know, doing that for another five, 10 or 15 years, it's just, it's not going to probably move the needle much. And you're probably right. So, so you got to change your environment. Changing your environment again comes down to what you're reading, what you're listening to. Don't you know? Get, get off the social media. Get off the the, uh, the 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 news media today. It's just it's craziness. And find people 
that are are living a different life, the ones who are not being uh, living an a, a, what I call an average life or following the majority. Um, people, people are too worried today about fitting in. I think too, way too much. Uh, we all want to be liked. Uh, we don't, we, we want people to, and I have some of that in me, I, 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 I grant you, but I've, I've learned through people like Dan Kennedy and others, Dan Sullivan, that, that if you're going to have a, a life where it can be a more exceptional life, and again, I'm not talking about materialism, I'm talking about where you actually can have impact, because when you get on that Maslow's hierarchy, that, that self-actualization, uh, which I call today, you know, significance, meaning, purpose, impact, legacy, to actually get some more focus on that, you know, you, you, you can't do like everybody else is doing, because most of the people in the world today, and even a blessed country like the USA, um, are many are you know just one one tragic um, life event from yeah. like being sort of broke, like right? or don't have enough to, to cover it, you know. And how can you how can you live a life of freedom? How can you expand your horizons? How can you think differently when every every day you wake up and it's like you know you, you keep your fingers crossed that you know the transmission doesn't go out or something of that nature. And and that see that's that's like a oppression. Uh, but why does that happen? And I think, again, it goes back to the schools and how we're indoctrinating young people to, to, to be workers in a cogs in a system today that doesn't give them the ability to think bigger, to position themselves. We just, we're enabling a whole generations of people to, to be kind of victims and be dependent on the government or dependent on trade associations or whatever to, like, to, to, to carry the day. Mm -hmm. And you cannot afford to put your future and you, the impact you want to have uh, in other people's hands. You can't. Yeah. you got to find the right people to partner with and, and have synergy. But it's typically not the people that you're doing it with right now. Governments, trade associations, lobbying groups, they've all got an agenda. And it, it's not first and foremost looking out for you. It's their, their, what they're looking out for. And if you get anything out of it, you know, then good for you. But it's, it's few and far between. Yeah, and, and again, that's the power of the mastermind, right? Get with other like-minded people that are kind of moving in the same direction and you guys will, it just becomes, you know, two plus two is not four, it's it's 10 at that point. Right. So, All right, so how do you want readers to use your book? You know, how, how can they get the most out of it? It's, it's a book that was written for really all generations. Um, that, as you said earlier, this is from principles that, you know, I've learned in my life and we certainly teach in Freedom Founders. Um, mm -hmm. But I want people to use it as, as a book to, for them, the number one challenge of their thinking, the, their belief system up to, up to now, and realize that a lot of the things that we all have been led to believe are not factual. They're not truthful. So, mm -hmm. so how can you challenge yourself on some of your beliefs and some of the ways you're do, doing and living life right now that can start open doors for you? Um, you, have to, you have to be willing to get a little bit uncomfortable to take some steps uh, that maybe seeming to you right now a little bit risky but again if you find through relationships the right people who have already also done some of those things and you can see uh, uh, you know they can give you some some caveats or some things to to, to look for when you are going to step outside that comfort zone that's held you back all these years uh, that's how i want people to use the book um, there's as you said there's I, I put a lot of real stories in there because uh, i think we all learn through stories uh, we're going to take some take some frameworks but actually see you know how did it change other people's lives because we we see ourselves through other people's stories. And that's why relationships and mastermind groups and that kind of thing are really important because you get to see yourself through other people and go, you know, I'm not so different than, than that person or that couple. I'm not, we're not that different. We're not, they're not like genius people and they're so smart or they were just gifted. No, we're very, very much the same. It's just maybe the environment I've kept myself in all these years because I wanted safety of the crowds and safety of the majority. It's really been holding me back. I want people to learn to think differently and to challenge those beliefs so they can live a life with more freedom and potentially uh, have more impact wherever they want to have that impact. Yep. Yep. Good stuff. Good stuff on all that. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if anybody ever, you know, I'm sure people look at freedom founders sometimes when they're going to come to be part of the group and it's scary, right? It's scary at the beginning. Um, but yet we are all just, you know, we all put our pants on exactly the same way. You know, I might know something more than you do on something, but you know something more than I do on, you know, and that's the beauty. Of, of putting it all together. So, all right, well, you know, you're going to get this question. What's your next, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to answer that since you've been helping everybody else um, with all this. Uh, what's your next at this point of the game? Well, you know, I, I, I found myself over the last number of years, you know, Freedom Founders uh, started when I left my practice and created some space um, 
in my life to figure out what gave me energy and it's formed organically and it's been fun. And, and I, I, I love teaching financial principles. I love talking about real estate and alternatives because I mean, that's what set me free and it set so many other people free. But I found myself, Greg, like the last few years, even though that, that's a core component uh, and I love that stuff, I've been, I found myself just um, professing what I believe in uh, at even like a higher level. Um, that's why the, the look, you know, I, I have the different freedom assets. It's it's not just capital investment. That's a piece of it. Uh, but I realize that there's these other pieces. And so I think for me, my next is going to continue to evolve. And I want to, you know, continue to profess what I believe in uh, through different media channels. Um, books um, are a great way to do it. And I find that uh, by collaborating with a, a, a good writer to help me get my thoughts out uh, really helps me uh, understand a lot of the principles, some of which maybe became inherent to me over the years, but I hadn't really articulated them. So, so it's really, I want to be a messenger and I want to do it with people like you and other Freedom Founders members and trusted advisors. I want to do it with people that I, that I, I think also have the same beliefs. They're not just about the money. They're about, they're about impact. They're about who are we helping here by doing what we do. And if I can help um, a, a, a larger group of generations from young people that are in school or just get graduated from school and all the way through, you know, people who are there, they're at the end of their active career, uh, not only to help them get free, but also so that they can also give back. I want to uh, impart that motivation and incentive in more people because I think where we are in our, our country today, um, we can certainly talk about a lot of negative things, but you know, how can we have positive impact? And mm -hmm. I think that's one way is we can lead from our beliefs and maybe the blessings we have and sow that on other people so they might pass it on to others. Well, David, you have found your calling because you are very, very good at what you do. So keep up with it. Uh, I enjoy it a ton. So thanks today for coming on the podcast and um, talking about your book and everything like that. So I, I've truly enjoyed being part of the Freedom Founders. And so I, I appreciate that you uh, allow me to be part of all of that. So thanks for, for being here today. Oh, Greg, it's a pleasure. Love, love talking to you about the things that uh, we both, both believe in, we both love. Thank you. Sounds good.